welcome Siobhan. Thanks for coming to our interview here and uh, for letting me interview you on your Quiet Amsterdam Box, your Quiet series, one of them being the Amsterdam Box. Thank please you. tell us. Thank yeah. you very much for please, inviting me. Yeah, please tell our, uh, our, our video people uh, all about your box and who you are. Okay, uh, I'm an uh, artist and writer. I live in Amsterdam and I've been here since the year 2000. And I used to be a university lecturer teaching photography, video and cultural studies. And I did, taught some fine art. And I came here because my husband thought if, I, uh, if he took me to another country, I might not work so hard. Okay. Um, and I also had a hearing problem. I have something called Meniere's disease. So I have a lot of hearing loss in my left ear. So it's difficult to talk to people in a noisy, crowded place. Yes. And so while I was living in London, I started to find places that were quiet and um, really pe peaceful and calm because it was quite a, a kind of busy job. And so other people wanted to know about these quiet places. So when I came to Amsterdam, I wasn't working. Uh, I just did volunteer work in a botanic garden. Um, what I did is I started to put together images and text and find places that were really quiet in the new, my newly adopted city. Yes. And so quite Amsterdam was born. <coughs> yes, and I think I met you at the shop about ten years ago. Yes. Yes, you came right. in with quite Amsterdam. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. And what are your criteria for actually selecting a place? Uh, uh, I always choose places that don't have background music. Um, and in Amsterdam, they're quite easy to find. For example, De Plantage is a new kind of newish cafe next yeah. to the zoo. Yeah. And uh, even though it's quite large, they don't have background music playing, so they are in the book. Yes. Um, and I would choose small shops, especially if the owner was somebody who worked in the shop and made things by hand or encouraged people locally to make beautiful kind of um, ceramics or something. Yes. Then Artesian they, places. Yeah. Yes. Artesian nice. places, yes. 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 Um, for example, there's a place in London where it's called Wall and Jones in the East End, and they make beautiful clothes, amazing dresses from fabric taken from other old clothes. So yeah. they make beautiful dress shirt dresses out of old men's shirts. Nice. And uh, really nice places that people would want to go to, but not only tourists, local people. Yes. And that's why I think quite London sold really well. Because um, it's yes, local it was people a huge who want success. to know. Yeah. It was what twenty six thousand yeah, copies. At least twenty six thousand. That's now. fantastic. And so that's you see, self published authors. Yeah, and but you had a whole strategy surrounding. I that. did because I couldn't find a publisher for the quiet books. People said to me it wouldn't sell, which is why I'm so proud of that twenty six thousand. And uh, so in in uh, quiet Amsterdam was actually self published. The first edition I published yes. myself. I paid for the printing, I got it printed in Amsterdam, and I paid for a designer to help me get it ready for the printers and find the, uh, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name, <laughs> what's on the back of the book? Uh, the barcode. The barcode. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I set up a business as a, as a publisher, which is called Image Found, and that was quite useful because even my close friends in London didn't realise that I was a publisher. They thought that is a very clever yeah. uh, decision to make. So that, that it doesn't come from you, so to speak, but yeah. a different name. Yeah, yeah my published company doesn't say Siobhan Wall. It's fantastic. Says Image Found, and I left it very open so that if I wanted to produce other kinds of books, I didn't want to call the company Quiet Books in case I published children's books, for example. Yes. It's a bit of a boring name, but yes. it's, it's useful in that it's kind it's of... It's flexible. It's flexible. Yes. Yeah, it's very all-encompassing. Yes. Mm. These are some really good tips. And because of that, I self-published, sold my thousand copies that I got printed in black and white. In black and white because it's cheaper than colour. And then I found an agent in London, and she found me the publisher within two weeks. Fantastic. And it's really... And you had two publishers that were interested. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Fantastic. And so it makes a huge difference. Huge. If you uh, make a book yeah. and you print it, yeah. and you can show that you can publicise it and sell it. Yes. Because then the publishers know they don't have to do much work. Yes. The more you do yourself... Yes, the more sellable your... Uh, yeah. And you've got to make it, you know, and make sure that... The design is really beautiful, so people want it as an object. They yes. want the book. They yes. want to kind of buy yes. it. Yes, yes, I think that sounds wise. And are you thinking about another? I know you've got uh, five quiet books. There are New York, London, Amsterdam, and there are some that you didn't uh, publish yourself, but other yes. people did do it for you. Well, there are 
four now, four London books. There's one main one, and then there's four, one quiet culture, quiet food and drink, yeah. and quiet places such as parks and gardens and churches. And there's quiet Paris, Barcelona, Amsterdam, New York. Okay. Mm. And have you got any idea for the next one? Are you? Uh, I probably will have a break Thank from you. it because I want to do more drawing. I uh, just found a gallery in Amsterdam and wants to show my drawings, so I might illustrate some children's books that I've written. But um, again, I might have to self-publish. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, to start off, and I would recommend anybody who wants to get into publishing and is totally new and doesn't have any contacts, is to find a really great um, graphic designer to help you produce a book that looks beautiful. Yes. Um, and get it ready and publish it, you know, not through kind of stapling pages together. No. <laughs> Although that's, you know, I have made handmade books for yeah. my own poetry, but, yeah. Um, yeah, make it look really professional so nobody even knows that it's self-published. Yes, I think that's extremely wise. Mm. Thank you very much for that's okay. uh, interview for letting me interview. You. And Thank again, you. we've got here we are. This that's is, the latest this is, this one. The latest one. Congratulations. <laughs> Hola. Hola. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. That's okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.